Hello, I'm Virginia Eskin. Welcome to First Ladies of Music, a new series about women composers. This program is underwritten by a generous grant from Northeastern University in Boston. Today we are going to address ourselves to women composers who have an international viewpoint. And what do we mean by that? Well, most of them studied abroad or lived abroad or in some way they were not American-based and trained. So that's the international part of it. We're going to lead off with Ruth Schoenthal, who was born in 1924. She lives in New York State at the moment. She was born in Hamburg in Germany and had to flee the Nazis. She first went to Sweden in 1938, where she studied at the Swedish Royal Academy. Then the family moved to Mexico and she studied with Manuel Ponce, and she in fact gave a performance of her own piano concerto in Mexico City. After that, she came to the United States and studied with Paul Hindemith, trained under him at Yale, and her music has a lot of his imprint, and he was supposed to have been very impressed with her as a student. She did what a lot of us do growing up. She supported herself by playing in nightclubs and wrote popular songs, did music for TV commercials, and learned how to play all kinds of music, even though a lot of her earlier works reflected some of the Mexican culture. As far as I'm concerned, Ruth's music has a very Germanic and a very elegant sort of romantic quality. And I'm gonna play for you a little Sonata Breva. And I called her up and I asked her if she had any words that she would like me to share. And she said that it was composed in 1973. And it was my first breakthrough stylistically after having studied with Hindemith, and I was sort of creating my own voice. And I like to play it because it sounds modern, music sort of of our time, and at the same time, she definitely is looking backwards to the great German canon. And I like the fact that she also has moved with the times. So often composers have a success early on and they never seem to go to another place. Or as in the case with some of our other women like Clark, they burn out and they don't compose anything. Ruth has continued and is working on works right now and she's changed her style. So this Sonata Breve that I'm gonna play for you is an earlier work and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
I just played for you the Sonata Breve, composed by Ruth Schoenthal. And I hope you enjoyed some of the qualities that I was speaking about. She's got a very large oeuvre and wonderful string quartet that I've heard that's often performed, a lot of music for percussion and ensembles. So she's a, a practical composer. Our next woman is Vivian Fine, who was born in 1913 and died in 2000. Now, Vivian is an American product who studies abroad, but she takes her cue kind of from Ruth Crawford in that her music is not like Schoenthal's music, which is sort of European-sounding to my ears. Fine's is very intellectual and is going to be American in its openness. It's not as hemmed in. And Fine was a very accomplished pianist. She studies with a woman who was influenced by Scriabin and also was a good friend of Ruth Crawford, Lavoy Hertz. And she goes on to study also with Roger Sessions and eventually orchestration with George Sell. That's before he's the conductor of the Cleveland Orchestra. He was a very fine pianist himself. Vivian Fine makes her professional debut as a composer at age 16 when her works were performed in Chicago, New York, and even in Dessau, Germany. She moves to New York City in 1931, was an accompanist and composer for dance companies. And in that way, she's like our former composer, Ruth Schoenthal. She's doing all kinds of work in the field of music. She eventually becomes a faculty member at Bennington College in Vermont, and that lasts for many years, from 64 to 87. And that's where most people think of her and her large influence as a teacher and a mentor, and she was a wonderful educator. She received many awards, including the Guggenheim, a Ford, Rockefeller, and Kusevitsky Foundation grants. So she was hardly what we would think of as a wallflower, just the opposite. I remember her coming to my university, which is Northeastern in Boston, and made a wonderful impression on the students because she was just as sparkly and spunky as somebody in their teens. And then she spoke in a very fresh voice, Let's have a listen to Vivian Fine's Concertant for Piano, composed in 1944. Thank you. 
That was the first movement of Vivian Fine's Concertante for Piano. The pianist was Raiko Honshu, and the Japan Philharmonic was led by A. Watanabe. Now our next woman is Miriam Gideon, who lived from 1906 to 1996. This is a very interesting life. Miriam Gideon actually set her cap to getting a lot of Jewish liturgical commissions. And that's an important thing because it's obvious that she saw that there was a gap and so she set about to filling it. And she was the first woman to receive a commission for a complete surface. That would be in 1970. That's an important honor. She didn't rely on a preconceived compositional style. She let each work suggest how it should sound. And her musical language can be described as freely atonal. Well, there's that dangerous word again, atonal. I know we have to use it because there's no other word. But when you listen to this piece, I think you'll enjoy it because it's very strong, it's, it's very evocative. At the same time, you would say it's intellectual, but I think it's also very accessible, meaning that it connects with us. Why don't we have a listen to Steeds of Darkness for tenor and ensemble. This is the second movement, it's called Rather Fast. I hear the last shudder of your flesh as the horses of death make off with you galloping rainless into the night. I follow the stirrups of grief Goading my belly like dawn, shaking the limbs of darkness. You just heard Steeds of Darkness, sung by Constantine Casolis and the Speculum Musicae. Now we're going to hear a movement from her cello sonata, and I've chosen it for us because I find it very arresting. Agitato ma non troppo, 
in vivo. First moment.
You just heard a movement from Miriam Gideon's Cello Sonata. It was played by Elizabeth Moore on cello, and Fred Bronstein was the pianist. You're listening to First Ladies of Music. We'd love to hear from you. You can send your comments via email to ladies at wfmt.com. You're listening to the WFMT Radio Network. Welcome back to First Ladies of Music. Now we come to a favorite of mine, Graznia Batsevich. She was born in 1913 and lived till 1969. She is 100% Polish. I think she's every bit the equal of Bartok, and most Poles would agree with me. She wrote lots of strong music. It has that dark, kind of sardonic tinge. She graduated from the Warsaw Conservatory. She majored in violin and composition. She went down to Paris to study with Boulanger, returned briefly to Poland to teach, and then went back to Paris to continue her studies with Karl Flusch. She was principal violin of the Polish Radio Orchestra, and she played as a soloist in European countries often. She became an established musician in Warsaw. She taught at the conservatory there, and she chose to stay in Poland during the war, even though she could have moved, certainly, to Paris or even come to this country to get music from a European composer, you have to sometimes go through the national publishing company that Poland has, it's called PMW, or it's the same in Czechoslovakia. And those countries establish a publishing company for their composers and a recording company. Batsevich's music is all available now, and I wish more of it was heard in this country. And I'm thrilled that we're including her on First Ladies. Let's listen to a little piece that I love to play. It's called a Triptych, so it's just three little movements, and it's, it's really like a bonbon. You can just toss it off, and it has what I was talking about, that sort of sardonic, real edge to it. Listen to Batsevich's Piano Triptych. <laughs> just played Batsevich's Triptych. After the war, Batsevich continued as a concert violinist, 
but she was also a very good pianist and a notable interpreter of her own second piano sonata. She won many awards for her compositions, including the gold medal at the Queen Elizabeth Concours in Brussels for her 1965 violin concerto. I'd like to share with you a movement from Batsevich's fifth violin sonata, and the reason I've chosen it, and you'll soon understand, it's a dynamite movement. It starts with enormous speed, and then listen in the middle. She breaks the mood of it with this very pale, sad, kind of slow part, and then it gains steam and just goes out like a hail of bullets. Here's the finale of Batsevich's fifth violin sonata. <laughs>
You just heard the finale movement of Batsevich's Violin Sonata No. 5, played by Arnold Belnick, and Sergei Silvansky was the pianist. Now we're going to go to a woman named Eleanor Remick Warren. Boy, she had a long life, born in 1900 and died in 1991. That's the span of the 20th century, really. She was born in L.A. and lived in the West all her life, and she was very taken by the beauty of nature, especially by living in the West. She lived a life of comfort. She apparently married a prominent man, and she was a rather grand lady of society. But as Marilyn Horne has said, quote, she got up and composed every day of her life. That's a great quote. Her early works were seen by Ionescu, the famous Romanian composer, and he encouraged her. She attended master classes with Schoenberg and Godowski, and again, she went to Paris and studied with Boulanger. The premiere of her piece, The Harp Weaver, happened in New York in 1936, and this apparently brought her to critical attention. And the LA Philharmonic premiered another work, The Legend of King Arthur, in 1940, and that brought her international recognition. She was a very prolific composer, and she apparently worked well into her 90th year. Let's listen to a charming song. It's called The Heart of a Rose. We just heard Heart of a Rose, composed by Eleanor Remick Warren, and was sung by Suzanne Mentzer, accompanied by Craig Rutenberg. Now the last woman in our International Viewpoint program is Marga Richter, and she is alive. She was born in 1926. She was born in Reedsburg, Wisconsin, and went to Juilliard, where she studied piano with Turek and composition with Bergsma and Vincent Persichetti. I think in describing Marga Richter, again, we would talk about a woman who has had very proper background training. She's in the right time, at the right place. She does the right thing. She receives important commissions and awards, an NEA grant, a Rockefeller Foundation grant, National Federation of Music Clubs, Meet the Composer. When you look at the printout, everything is all in a row and then you have to ask yourself, why don't we know more about her? Because she's obviously been around for many years and been very much admired. I don't know. 
I don't know myself. I know that one time I was in Atlanta, and Robert Spano programmed a work, and the audience sort of got up and went ballistic. They were so excited, and I think she was there, and she took a bow. And I remember all the people around me saying, isn't that an amazing thing? A woman wrote that. That was just an amazing piece. Part of our series is trying to demystify why women composers are considered sort of other. I hope that after you hear this, you will take pleasure when you run across a woman composer. We're going to end with a portion of Blackberry Vines and Winter Fruit, composed by Marga Richter.
You just heard a portion of Marga Richter's Blackberry Vines and Winter Fruit, which was composed in 1976, played by the London Philharmonic with Harold Farberman conducting. From now on, our last four shows are going to showcase very different types of women composers. There will be a lot of emphasis on multiculturalism, women from many different countries, different types of music. It's going to be very interesting. I hope you'll join us. First Ladies of Music with Virginia Eskin is produced by Carolyn Pollan from the WFMT Radio Network. Steve Robinson is the executive producer. The engineer is Mary Mazurik. Thanks to Alice Abraham, librarian at WGBH Radio in Boston. And special thanks to Boston's Northeastern University for their generous support. I'm Virginia Eskin, inviting you to join me again next time for First Ladies of Music. This is the WFMT Radio Network. <laughs>